Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Today, we're reintroducing the American Family Act, our bill to transform the child tax credit. I want to first thank Sherrod, Rosa, and Susan for their leadership, and also to Jessica for traveling all the way from Philadelphia to share your story. Thank you for being here today. In every part of my state of Colorado, urban and rural, Republicans, Democrats, and independents, I hear the same thing. People are working full time, even overtime, and they're struggling to raise a family and enjoy a middle class life. Because we've had over 40 years when 90% of Americans haven't had a real pay raise, even as the cost of health care, child care, housing, and higher education have continued to escalate every year. The American Family Act is a big part of how we respond to that problem, which I see as one of the central economic challenges of our time. It also responds to one of the great moral challenges of our time, which is that we have 10 million American kids living in poverty in this country. But let me explain briefly how the bill works. Because of the way Washington designed the existing child credit, 27 million kids don't have the benefit of the full $2,000 amount. Our bill puts an end to that. It significantly increases the child tax credit and for the first time makes it fully refundable. That means that all those kids and families that have never enjoyed the benefits, of the full benefit of the tax credit finally will. For a family of four earning $60,000 a year, our bill would mean another $3,200 in their paychecks each and every year. On top of that, our bill would cut child poverty in the United States by nearly 40%. I can think of nothing more at war with who we are as Americans than allowing our kids to languish in poverty. And this bill is our way of saying we don't have to accept that for our country. Last week, a report from the National Academy of Sciences found that child poverty costs our country between $800 billion and $1.1 trillion every year. The Academy looked at four different approaches to cut child poverty in half. The most effective policy in any of these approaches was a child credit like the American Family Act. The second most effective listed was another child, uh, uh, another uh, bill like the American Family Act. As a former school superintendent, I can tell you that our bill would be one of the most important investments we can make in the future of our country. The research is overwhelming. When parents have the ability to provide for their kids, we know their kids are more likely to do well in school, stay healthy, stay out of trouble, and stay on a path to higher income when they grow up. On top of that, while this is, on, on top of all of that, this is not a massive new federal program. It cuts childhood poverty by 40%, but it does it as a tax credit. It is direct, it is simple, it is effective. It will help families and kids that are struggling. And that's why our bill now has 35 co-sponsors in the Senate, three quarters of the Democratic caucus. Uh, my hope is that this strong show of support will move us closer to signing the American Family Act into law because for the families we represent, that day can't come soon enough. Now let me turn this over to my pal, Sherrod Brown, who has been uh, with this bill from the very beginning. Thanks, Sherrod. Michael, thanks. And um, Ms. Morris, thank you so much for being here. You can stand up here with us if you would like to. So, thank you. Thanks so much for joining us. Uh, and to the to the Harris's and to Ellen, thanks for being the warriors on on this issue and all combat poverty and in Korean and just making so many lives better. Thank you for that. Uh, nice to see you. Thanks, Susan and Rosa. Always my longtime friend, Rosa, so good to see you. Uh, we start with this, we throw out the Trump tax law, the Trump tax law that's always tilted towards the rich, the Trump tax law that doesn't encourage work, the Trump tax law that doesn't uh, at all alleviate poverty in any way and continues the dollars in this country and in the tax system going to the top. Uh, putting people first, rewriting our tax law, is a key part of that is dramatically expanding the child tax credit. What Michael has done on this, I've, I've watched Michael go member to member, and uh, some of our colleagues are smarter than others, and some he has to explain it in more detail, but most of them have caught on, and we've got 35 sponsors, and, and that's really mostly overwhelming in the work that Michael Bennett has done. Uh, we know in this country wages are flat, and we know corporate profits are up, we know 
that, um, that, that executive compensation has exploded. We know workers are working harder and more productive than ever before, but wages are flat. Uh, the cost of, rise, of raising kids continues to go up. Child care, I hear far too many people saying they put off having children or don't have children at all because they can't afford child care. Uh, we need to address that, and you address that in large part um, from, from the Bennett, uh, Delora, Del Benny Brown bill and doing this right. Uh, we need to rethink on how we treat raising children in this country. Uh, a woman who runs a daycare center told me the other day that, that child care should be a public good, that we should, as we, as we you know, we, we, we invest in, in, uh, in, in parks or invest in transportation, we should be investing in children, investing in families, investing in child care, a nurturing child care that launches children um, the way that we want them to be launched into, into adolescence and into adulthood. This legislation speaks to that. When work has dignity, everyone, everyone can then afford to raise a family, they can afford child care, they can stay home uh, with children, they can save for college. This plan would make a big difference for families paying for daycare and diapers and school supplies and all the extra expenses that come with raising children. This is a bill that really will affect children's lives and strengthen American families. Congresswoman Delora, Thank you're you. next. Thank you. Thank you so, mu so much, uh, Congress uh, Senator Brown. My God, we shared uh, the uh, uh, being Congress people together many, many, for many, many years. But you know, so fancy. oh my God, you know, really, you know. Well, that's what happens when you cross over to the Senate side, you know. Anyway, no. Uh, but so please, it's a glorious day. It really is, I, and in so, so many ways. Uh, and I'm so pleased to be here with my colleagues as we introduce the American Family Act. I've been proud to work with my colleagues, to the senators, uh, Senator Bennett, Senator Brown, real champions in, in, in the Senate. Um, Sheridan and I have been fighting to ensure that labor protections are out there and, and, and enforcement of labor standards are part of our trade agreements. Um, and Senator Bennett is a member of the Finance Committee, uh, someone who was supporting proposals that uh, uh, elevate the economic well-being of working families, including an investment tax credit for clean energy and a tax credit for family caregivers. And to, I really want to acknowledge my House counterpart, and that's uh, Congresswoman uh, Susan Del Bene. She is a member of the Powerful Ways and Means Committee um, uh, and leading the charge uh, on policies like the child tax credit, uh, which gives working families a better chance a better chance at a better life. So, so glad to stand and fight with you. And Jessica, let me just say this to you. Thank you for being here to tell your story. Uh, if you, give me a second because uh, I'm very excited. I've been working on the child tax credit for a very long time. In 2003, I introduced the First Amendment to expand the child tax credit to all families who earn too little to get a full credit. It was introduced in the Budget Committee and it failed on a party line vote. Uh, but I and my colleagues have remained, uh, you know, I've been a leading proponent of expanding the child tax credit, battled successfully to expand it at every opportunity when there's been a tax bill or a tax extender. So we've been able to raise the amount, um, they have the income threshold lower so that more people are covered and moving toward making this uh, universal for lower income and middle income households. You know, the, the administration's tax bill has been, has been mentioned. Um, that was expanded and it expanded eligibility on the child tax credit, but let me just tell you what they did. Unfortunately, they chose to make members of Congress eligible while leaving out one third of all children and families from the full benefit. Those left out of the full benefit include health care workers, folks who have multiple jobs, military families. Let me underline that point because one third of all children in our country were left out of the credit, including struggling middle class families and those striving to enter into the middle class. It's not right. It's not right for the middle class. It's not right for those who aspire uh, to, uh, to get into the middle class. So. Um, it's, I'm just 
overwhelmed in trying to continue this history of working on the child tax credit and so proud to be introducing the American Family Act uh, in the House along with, uh, with my colleague, uh, Susan Del Bene. Um, you know, the current child tax credit is important to middle class families, the current. It is, it's sustaining. And the American Family Act is transformative in this regard for middle class families, for working people now, and for low income workers and poor families. It creates a young child tax credit equal to $3,600 per year for children under six years of age. Particularly proud of the section of the legislation uh, which we've championed uh, in other forms for a number of years. We have study after study. You know, look, I, I, I watch my grandkids the five of them, you, you know, the first few years are essential to long-term outcomes for kids. But for our kids to be able to thrive, we have to support them at it's what a time for crucial development. We can do this by increasing the value of the child tax credit for families with a child under the age of six and positively impacting a child's health, education, and future. The legislation makes that young child tax credit, as well as the entire child tax credit, fully refundable, indexed to inflation, and, linked, and not linked to income. So in this way, we assure that we are making the assistance available to those who earn too little to get the full credit. Um, this is an anomaly in the current law, that one third of children are not eligible for the full benefit because their parents earn too little. And we fix that in this legislation. So making the credits fully refundable could be monumental. According to Columbia University Center on Poverty and Social Policy, it would cut child poverty nearly 38%, deep child poverty in half. It would do so consistent with, the Senator Bennett mentioned, the National Academy of, Science, of Sciences did a roadmap to reducing child poverty which recommended various combinations of policies to meet the goal of reducing child poverty by 50%. Those recommend recommendations are included in the American Family Act. Um, it's gonna provide the tax credit as a monthly credit instead of that lump sum at the end of the year. And that's because all families, I don't care what, what, what family you're in, um, you have costs throughout the year. It's child care, it is diapers, it's food, you name it, uh, and it's taken care of. Uh, at this time, I want to say a thank you to Jessica for joining us. She's going to speak about how this uh, impacts her family and what the struggle is for her and her family. You know, the biggest economic challenge that we face today is that Americans are in jobs that do not pay them enough money to live on. That is certainly true for Jessica when she talks about how hard she's working and, and what her, hu her husband is doing, and they struggle to get by. You know, I, I mean, I'm gonna conclude with this. The child tax credit is a principal vehicle in Western democracies for having healthy children and for equalizing opportunity. In the United States, it is a vehicle, vehicle for raising millions of children and families out of poverty. It was conceived and supported on a bipartisan basis. Republicans introduced the child tax credit in 1994. It became law under a Democratic president, President Bill Clinton. And today, two Republicans are figuring out how to support a child tax credit in some form. So it's evident that both parties understand that we must help working families afford the expenses related to raising children. That said, my Republican colleagues spent one and a half trillion dollars of taxpayer money to gift the richest corporations and individuals a tax cut. But you know, creating a strong middle class, ending childhood poverty should be our priority, not increasing the wealth of 1%. So looking forward to working with my House colleagues, Senate colleagues to pass the bill. Democrats, Republicans, you all have what, 35? Yeah, 35. 173 in the House. So this is so great. Far. So, so far. far, so far, by the end of the day, we'll have 175. We're going to, <laughs> it's going in at, at noon. So it's time. We need to expand. We need to strengthen the child tax credit. The American Family Act is about doing that. And my thanks as well to people in this room who have helped to make this a reality. And I point to Bill and David Harris. Thank you for all that you've done on this issue. Thank you. 
and my colleague, Susan Delbo. Thank you, Rosa. Um, and I want to thank the senators for their incredible work on, on this issue and their leadership. Um, but especially, I want to thank my colleague, Rosa DeLauro, because she has been, you noticed just her standing up here, tireless in her advocacy on this for years and supporting families across our country. Um, it's been her commitment, and we've seen that in this piece of legislation, too, to continue to move forward. Um, strengthening the child tax credit is a moral imperative. Um, it'll help countless people in my district, but also across the country. Um, too many parents are facing difficult realities as they try to raise a family today. Stagnating wages, higher housing costs, student loan debt, um, they're making it harder for parents to give their children the opportunity that they need to succeed. The Republicans use their time in the majority to pass a tax bill to benefit the wealthiest. Um, in this new Democratic majority, we're prioritizing the needs of middle class families. The child tax credit has already helped lift thousands of families in my state out of poverty. I've heard directly from folks in my state of Washington who would directly benefit from this legislation as well. So for example, one mother from Bellingham wrote my office about how she and her husband are struggling to find good paying jobs to support their two elementary school age daughters. And the child, child tax credit helps their family during this time of need, but they still need more help. A single mom who cleans houses for a living told my office that the child tax credit allows her to take care of essential maintenance on her car so she can get to work. Um, otherwise, she couldn't afford to do that. Um, any money that she would have left over goes to trying to help raise her kids, um, she could use more. She said the child tax credit allows families to live the American dream. And then there's the single mom of four girls whose former partner left their family and never paid child support. She works 30 hours a week and another 15 hours on her own small business. She says she wouldn't get by without the help of Medicaid, free school lunches, and the child tax credit. And she says she may not be able to pay for childcare this summer unless the child tax credit is increased, which is why this bill is so important. As a parent, I know how much every parent wants to see their kids have every single opportunity to succeed. And by passing the American Family Act, we'll be providing common sense tax relief for working families and the middle class, create a fair system that allows parents to invest in their children's future and that will lift up all of our communities. So thank you so much for everyone's hard work here, and thank you, Jessica, for being here to share your story. Jessica, would you like to? Jessica, Jessica Morrison, watch your step. <laughs> Be careful. Just out of your way. Thank you. Good afternoon. My name is Jessica Morrison, and I live just outside of Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. I'm a proud member of Moms Rising. And as the mother of beautiful, free-spirited four-year-old named Lana and another child due in just a few weeks, I know firsthand why we urgently need to improve and expand the child tax credit, especially for families with young children. I'm here today to share my story and urge Congress and the American to pass the American Family Act, which would help many working families just like mine. Any parent will tell you that raising a ch children in this country today is expensive. My partner and I both work full time, but our wages aren't high and money is tight. With each paycheck, we have to ask tough questions about how we will cover everything that we need. Will we be able to cover educational materials or play groups to give our daughter the tools that she needs to succeed? What about clothes, housing, and utilities? What will we do if one of our cars breaks down? Soon, when the baby is born, we'll be adding expenses like diapers and baby food to the mix. It's an incredibly stressful position to be in. There are many months when, despite our best efforts, we end up putting some expenses on our credit card just to keep our family afloat. The tax credits we receive help, but unfortunately, the child tax credit has not kept up with inflation and the rising cost of living. What's more is it doesn't account for the specific needs that we have as a family that will soon have two children under six years old. The American Family Act would make a big difference for us by fixing these gaps, by raising the maximum credit, indexing for inflation, and creating a new credit for children under six. It would ease a lot of our day-to-day -day stress by helping us handle the expenses that come with having young children. 
For example, one expense we really struggle with is childcare. My daughter is not old enough for school yet, but we can't afford the unbelievably expensive childcare options in our area. Still, we need two incomes to make ends meet. My partner worked in jewelry for 10 years, but currently works driving for Uber and Lyft, so he can spend four days a week at home with our daughter while driving nights and weekends. His schedule is grueling, to say the least. Then one day a week on Fridays, I make a very long drive to bring our daughter to her grandmother's house so that my, husband, or so that my partner can take care of other things that he needs to do. The whole situation is very stressful and especially challenging with a second child on the way. Our income is reduced because my partner needs to stay at home four days a week. And because someone has to be home with Lana, we have to work around each other and don't get a lot of time together as a family. It's exhausting. Still, it's the only way that we can make ends meet. If Congress passes the American Family Act, our lives would improve. If we had more resources to pay for childcare and other expenses, we could both remain in the workforce, working the hours we need to, and in jobs that give us a chance to get ahead while also spending more time bonding as a family. We could pay down the debts that we end up accruing, and on an emotional level, it would take a huge amount of stress off of our shoulders, and we would get to enjoy more precious family time at a crucial time in our children's development. In short, the American Family Act would be a lifeline for families like ours as we strive to give our children the healthy, secure start that they deserve. And because the American Family Act would make the child tax credit fully refundable, it would reach even more of the families who need it most. I hope Congress will make passing the American Family Act a high priority. The improvements that it makes to the child tax credit are long overdue and it would boost children's health and families' economic security nationwide. I know my family would be better off. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Oh, sorry. Are there any questions for my colleagues? No, everybody, everybody is eligible because it's the children that are the beneficiaries of it. So the, the legislation would create a child benefit or a child allowance like they have in every other advanced country. Why are you describing it as a tax credit instead of saying this is something that provides a monthly benefit to everyone with children? I think you could describe it either way. Is there another question? Do we look at children over six and under six? Yes. Right. And, um, okay. what, what bill prospects does the bill have before Congress and have you discussed with Republicans? Would you like to? You know, I, last I looked, we have the majority in the House of Representatives. Uh, so in that case, I think we, uh, um, we will be able to pass it in the House. We now have uh, uh, over, over 170. Uh, members uh, who are on the, on, the, on the bill for all regions of the country. The Ways and Means Committee, and Susan can speak to that, is ready and prepared to go, uh, supporting the effort. We are reaching out to our Republican colleagues, and obviously we encourage them. Uh, the, the issue is not a Democratic or Republican issue. This is about families, families who are struggling and who are working uh, and who are just trying to make ends meet. So. Uh, I, I, I am uh, uh, optimistic in the House of Representatives to do it. And what my hope is, if we pass it in the House, that there will be an understanding, and I'll let my Senate colleagues comment, that, you know, overwhelming the pressure is. And you're looking at folks in the Senate who are looking at child tax credit, but they will understand that this is the gold standard and move on this, and there will be a number, uh, there will be enough external pressure in order to move forward because it is the single biggest economic issue that people face today. Sure. When the House, yeah, thank you, Rosa. When the House passes this with an overwhelming margin, um, it puts pressure on the Senate, and I think Mitch McConnell will see that that um, he, he will hear from people, his members will hear from people all over the country about how much this means to their families. And uh, we don't put the emphasis on children in this society. This um, will help to build momentum, I think, in this Senate to respond once the House has done it overwhelmingly. One of the failings of this Congress has been that. 
it has done nothing to address the, the issues that all of us raised up here and hear from our constituents every single day. It's almost become an article of faith around here among some people that this present set of conditions, which do not allow poor and middle class families to be able to do the basic things that people in the middle class should be able to do, that that somehow sh is, an, is, an, is, an, is an, an adequate state of affairs, and it's not. And it's one of the things I think we're trying to address. This creates a lot of clarity about what our priorities look like, and I hope we're, and, and it's designed to be bipartisan. I hope it will be. I'll speak. I mean, for, first of all, I, for one, I think we should pay for the bill. Second, unlike their tax bill, uh, sec although, re although reversing that t tax bill would be a, a good thing to do, as Sherrod said, and help us be able to, to, to do this. I'm not going to negotiate today what the pay-fors are going to be for the bill um, when I'm in a Congress where they won't even pay for the stuff. But when I look at this and I think about the fact that we have spent, since 2001, Five trillion dollars on tax cuts that have gone to the wealthiest people in America, by and large. We've spent 5.6 trillion dollars in the Middle East. That's 12 trillion dollars we did not invest in American families. We did not invest in trying to uh, 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 end child poverty or cut it by almost half. And I think um, those are the objectives of this bill. And 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 I think it's worth doing. And we'll find a way to pay for it. I would, I would just say. It, this refers to the last question as well. What did we find out in the government shutdown? Now, we can all get up here and we stand and we do it all the time to talk about American families who are living paycheck to paycheck, those who are working. What happened? We found that people who were furloughed were not being able to make it. They couldn't pay mortgages. They couldn't pay school tuition. They couldn't put food on their table. They were going to food banks and so forth. Uh, to do this. We understand that contract workers who are going to get zero, that is what's going on in the lives of American families today. That's the kind of economic benefit that we see from this legislation to make sure we are giving American families economic security while they are doing everything that they can to provide for themselves and their families. And let's be clear, we're paying for lack of legislation like this right now through kids not growing up as healthy as they can, parents not having childcare, not being able to be in the workforce. Um, these are issues that impact every single part of our country. And so if we don't make investments like this to give everybody a great start to help families, which frankly I would argue gives us an incredible return on investment, um, if we don't do that, we're gonna pay for it in other ways. And part of that will be a diminishing quality of life for a lot of people and making it harder and harder for families like Jessica's. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you very, very much. Thanks for being here. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for doing that.